On this episode of Industry Relations, Rob and I talk about CoStar's recent earnings and what transformational deals may lay ahead. Let's go. This is Industry Relations, a podcast that's at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Industry Relations, the podcast where we completely nerd out on the tiniest little detail about real estate. I am your co-host, the notorious Rob, Rob Hahn, and with me, as always, the fabulous Greg Robertson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hola, Rob. Hola. <laughs> How the hell are you? Did, did you change or something? I yeah, I put did. on a different yeah. sweater, so... Even though we're recording these back to back, I thought I'd give the listeners a little different yeah. feel. I'm changing yeah. them. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping them guessing, Rob. That's right. I'm keeping them That's guessing. That's right. And what people will think is that I am so impoverished I could only afford one shirt. I think. Well, that's normally I think idea. you know this about me. I, I I just I wear a black polo. That's I'm like you know Steve Jobs. I don't I I, I quit trying to dress myself. So yeah, dude. You know there's something to be said for that, right? Just oh, it's make awesome. all your clothes the same. You know. Yeah, Zuckerberg I, did it. Uh, Einstein yeah. did it. It's just, yeah. I, I wake up, I got 10 of them, put a t-shirt on, put one yeah. on, that on top. I'm done. It's awesome. Actually, I remember, that reminds me, the first job I had at a college uh, was at a hedge fund called D.E. Shaw. And the founder and CEO, David Shaw, had this thing where he would wear mismatched socks. And somebody asked him once and he said, he realized he did math, he did some computations to figure out how many hours he spent matching socks out of the laundry and he said it was like enormous amount of hours he said this is bullshit i'm just gonna put on whatever yeah so he doesn't i was like you're you're a genius that's that's why <laughs> oh totally i get it <laughs> but in any event all right my man so i think the topic for this episode is the seeming uh rise of co-star uh Especially over the last six months, so I think you and I have talked about CoStar, you know, a bunch because they are probably the most serious sort of company to have entered residential real estate in a very, very long time, maybe ever, right? Um, and they just did their Q3 earnings report. I think they're one of the first to report, and it was kind of mind blowing. And there were some things that came out of it that I thought you and I should should discuss. Um, and I know, like previous episodes, we've always talked about CoStar and connection with like HomeSnap and the broker public portal and all yeah. these things. Like, that's obviously relevant as well. But really, it's just it's just looking at CoStar. So let me set the stage a little bit. I remember like when CoStar first entered back in what was I think it was last year, right? 2020 maybe at the end of 2020. You and I talked about it, and I remember you saying that you thought they were doing this because they saw the commercial real estate was in for a fucking bruising. Yeah, because right? like COVID had happened, work from home, offices, you know, like who the hell is using offices, right? Retail was getting hammered. Um, here we are in Q3 of 2022, and what I'm seeing is this bizarre thing where CoStar is just killing it, dude, right? Vers whereas residential real estate now is under massive pressure, right? So as a, let me see if I could pull up the, the data real quick. Yeah, I mean, I'll start. Some, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just a little bit of comment there. So, uh, you know, looking at my own company, you know, with w and, and and Lone Wolf and others, and then, you know, reading something about, you know, how much re retail space is open in, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. There was a big article about that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of companies are caught in the thing where they have to pay their leases. Right. Right. And, and let's think that this started in 2020 relatively, you know, what do you, if you have five year leases or you mm -hmm. know, sometimes 10 or whatever, they're, they're not going to default on those things. So, but those floors are empty, right? Right. They're all looking for somebody's sublease or whatever else. So right. I, I don't think it's very, you know, uh, something to kind of like be surprised by that CoStar hasn't felt the bite yet. I think, you know, because this has happened, we were 2022, the, the pandemic was 2020, um, but, you know, nobody's coming back, right? So I think right. any, 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 I don't want to put, I, I don't know where you're going with this. I think they did have a great earnings and everything else, but um, I, I still don't think they're out of the woods. I, I'm not saying they're out, but I, okay. like, it just kind of blew my mind because I expect the co to be really hurting because of the crash, if you will, in commercial real estate, 
right? And instead, they're posting like 12% year over year increase in revenues. They're net in, like they're ma- they made seventy two million dollars in profit last quarter, right? Um, you know their EBITDA is hundred twenty nine. Like everything is up from a revenue perspective for CoStar, right? And obviously their main business is in commercial. Meanwhile, so what, one of the things I looked at was like, okay, what's the market cap of CoStar now, right? Right now, as we're recording this, their market cap is over thirty two billion dollars. Right. Two years ago, when we, we were first starting to uh, maybe a year, two years, whatever, when CoStar had kind of entered residential, I remember writing something saying, okay, look, CoStar is a very serious threat. They're a big, they're a big boy, blah, blah, blah. But so is Zillow. Right. And you talked about that, like Zillow's like the fucking king in residential real estate. And both companies are about the same. About both the same. Are about That's 25, 26 right. million market that. cap. Now Zillow's around 7 billion. And close right, us so, at 32. And right. I'm looking at this like, it, it's not like, Zill- okay, cl- clearly we can talk about Zillow's I, you know, eye buying thing. We could talk about some of that. But all, almost all of it to me is all about the residential real estate market, the housing market, doing what it's been doing. Right. And investors have said, yeah, we don't want to have anything to do with residential housing. CoStar is killing it. And they're like, we want to have a lot to do with CoStar. It's just one of these like, holy crap, how things change in one year. Right, right. But I mean, I don't know if you're get what you're getting to is like, why would CoStar being successful in where they're at right now, wanting to get to this fucking shit show? Right? Right. I mean, that, I mean, that, that's a valid question. It's like, um, it's an excellent question. Right. Right. So like, it's like, I, I, are you saying that, you know, that CoStar wants to double down on residential when it's so bad. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta be thinking. Everybody's thinking of like, how do I get myself out of this shit, right? I think right. that's most people are thinking. Look at the stock. Look at the stocks of all the major companies. I mean, you talk about Zillow, but anywhere, Compass, Redfin, you know, all of those guys are completely down. I mean, if I'm, I, I could imagine shareholders of, of, you know, I'll make a relation to kind of Facebook in a way, but I can imagine the shareholders of CoStar saying. What you know, you've got something good, Andy. Why the fuck right. are you getting into this shit show called residential? Why have you spent right. so much money? Why are you doing this? As That's as right. a lot of people are saying to Mark Zuckerberg, what the fuck is this metaverse? Right, right. right. What, what are you doing? Why are you, you spending all this time? Why, why, why are you got? Why are you doing this? I mean, yeah. you know, we've got a good core business. Focus on that. So I mean, yeah, um, it, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's so, it's it's a it's a big question for sure. I agree with you. I'll I'll just tell you what Andy's answer to that question. I think okay. it's going to be because he mentioned it in his earnings call. What is you think or what he said? What he's I'll read you the exact quote. Okay, with rising interest rates and a rapidly cooling residential property market, I believe now is the perfect time to invest in a marketplace that's designed to help consumers and their agents advertise and sell properties faster and at a higher price. Deteriorating market conditions may well create a tailwind for our business model. Right. And earlier on, what he said was um, homes.com, which is kind of the centerpiece of their residential strategy, advertises properties instead of agents. To me, that was a slap against Zillow, right? Even though obviously Zillow advertises properties, right? The business model for Zillow is when you then make an inquiry, they take the buyer lead and they sell it to Yeah, this is agents. in relation to Tam that he was talking about, right? Yeah. Right. So what, what Andy's suggesting is because the residential housing market is crashing it's collapsing it's not about the agents it's about the property and it's gonna be the sellers and the listing agents who are now getting a little bit more uh incentivized right to try and promote the house so they're willing to maybe pay for a promoted listing maybe they're willing to pay for an advertising package and i guess yeah i I think that's i think that's his answer right Right. i think and, and he's really if you if you break it down even further it's not just they're it's not properties, but it's sellers, right? To some, right. He's he's saying, and this is the whole REA not, model. Yeah, you're, not, you're not getting money from a property. You're getting money no. from a seller, right? right? So yeah, right. You're not selling and, to you're not selling to agents, which is a limited TAM. You're talking to all the sellers now. You're, you're right. That that's that's your market Correct. now, right? And by direct, but by direct transfer from that, because we see this in commercial real estate, which obviously Andy has enormous experience and success in. When you're essentially telling the sellers, hey, you should advertise your property, what ends up happening is the listing agent says, I will advertise the property, right? 
Because that's what happens in commercial. Commercial, you're a, you're a commercial broker. You go to your whatever, you know, the strip mall owner and say, hey, listen, listen with me because I'm a platinum level, whatever, co-star loop net guy. And I have this many premium listings and I will make your listing one of my premiums. And I'm going to spend like that's that's the effect. Of what is yeah. The, the difference here is that, you know, the seller, the, the seller, it's like, great. I can't wait to see it on Zillow dot com. And then the, the then the <laughs> and then the agent says, "Well, yeah, it'll be on Zillow, of course, but well, of I'm going to spend a right. whole bunch of money on Homes.com, and they're going to go give a shit." But okay, right? right? But it's you know it's 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 like anything, right? You know, the, the listing if they're in a competitive situation, they want to have some some carrots to dangle in front of the seller. You should listen to me because I've got QR code. You should listen to me because I'm going to do is drone shots. You should listen to me because I have this Homes.com premium package. From the seller, it's like it doesn't cost me anything more. Sure. You get the listing. Yeah, if but it does be on Zillow, if, if right? Go, if they go to that free strategy, right, it doesn't. But, I mean, yeah, big whoop, right? Right. But I'm just saying, like, that's I, I mean, unless, unless, like, is. yeah, and, and unless, and, and, you know, he's been brilliant before, that they make such a splash with their advertising at homes.com that it's it becomes more front of mind. Right. Uh, with, the, with the sellers. Go, oh, yeah, I saw those commercials. Good. Right. And maybe that's right. going to be the... Uh, Maybe that's going to be the uh, the play too, right? So interesting thing there is that uh, they, in this report, what they said is Homes.com you know, visits grew 27%, while same time period, Zillow fell 22%, and Realtor.com fell 30%, right? That's what he, one thing he said. And what he said is- Homes.com I mean, traffic? Traffic visits up 27%. Now, here's the yeah, thing. So they what went he, from 10,000 to, you know. Exactly. Right. What he admitted, but we had a long way to go. And he he recognizes, yeah. you know, they're yeah. starting from a real low base versus Zillow and Realtor. But there is some significance to the fact that Zillow and Realtor fell. Why? Because buyer demand is plummeted. Why? Because the Fed is crushing buyer demand. by. Well, the other rates. thing is also, I think Spencer said on our, our podcast is like, you're not wanting to go back to look at your house when the freaking assessment's going down, right? <laughs> right, right, right. There's know, that as They're well. more likely to go on Zillow. How much is it worth today, right? right? Now it's like, the oh, relevant, look. But the relevant part of this is he, again, this is Andy in the Q3 earnings call, right? Uh, so I'll just read it to you because, again, why, why use my words, right? I'm encouraged by the rapid improvement in consumer traffic. We do have a long way to go, but we're tracking just where we were with traffic growth on apartments.com at the same time. And apartments.com was a very successful launch. And I'm like, that that's significant, right? Yeah. Okay. So what he's saying is look, when they when they launched apartments.com, obviously it was really low traffic. It wasn't a leader, but then they did whatever they did. They did the advertising, they did all that. And homes.com is tracking the same way. So if we play that for, say, three years or so, apartments.com eventually overtook everybody, including Zillow Reynolds. So I think he's saying, look, if we keep at that same growth rate, we do the same playbook, we do the Super Bowl ads, we do whatever, it should track the same rate. And again, there's some reason to believe him on that, right? So I think that's relevant. Is it there now? Of course not. And he's he's, like I said... You know, Andy Florence just simply say, "Yeah, we're, we got a long way to go. We're not, right. we're not up there yet, but we're on a good path." I'm like, "Okay, that's interesting." The other super interesting thing was this: is the first time I've heard Andy in an earnings call or in a press release, anything else, mention the antitrust lawsuits. Oh, okay. Well, what do you say? So I'll I'll just read that to you, right? Because <laughs> again, uh, you know, uh, hold on. All right. There is a potentially interesting development in the residential industry I want to briefly mention. We're closely monitoring ongoing antitrust litigation involving residential listing associations or MLSs and one that's currently pending in the Western District of Missouri. Right. That's the Spitzer, Spitzer case. Right. Spitzer, yeah. A class of home sellers alleged that NAR and brokerage uh, something created, infor created and enforced anti-competitive rules that require home sellers to pay a non-negotiable commission to the broker representing the home buyer, resulting in inflated buyer side brokerage commissions. To date, the plaintiffs have had some success defeating a motion to dismiss and succeeding in class certification. Class is scheduled for trial in February. If the plaintiffs in this case or other similar cases succeed, this could have a significant adverse effect on residential marketplaces that rely primarily on broker sharing commission revenue models. Our residential sales strategy should not be impacted as we are focused on a property advertising model. 
I do not believe that judgments for the plaintiffs would significantly adverse impact most residential agents because most do both seller and buyer representation and judgment would just shift fees from buyer representation business to seller representation business. More on that in February. In other words, after yeah. the trial. In, in other words, I'm betting on the don't come, mm -hmm. right? And everybody else is betting on the come, right? right. So, yeah. Right. And he's saying that homes.com, our business model of advertised property is we don't give a shit about cooperation and compensation. Right. Right. Which is why he can do the your listing, your lead. He can do this and he's just going to grow it. Right. Fascinating. Now, as you and I both talked about, I think Andy knew about these losses. I think Andy knew about the. There's the no coincidences. Right. There's right. never. And this way back. Thing, there's never. Yeah. Right, because he's not spending two hundred fifty million dollars on Homesnap without being aware that this is a possibility. It's even way more than that. Then he bought Homes. dot com, and then he that's then right. He, he blew up the freaking revenue models right. for both of those. I mean, that's right. But that's just my speculation. Yeah. We now have him actually mentioning the lawsuits and yeah. mentioning these things on an earnings call, right? So, well, and again, let's let's talk about that, right? Why? Yeah. Why? Why now he's doing that? Because I think he's got to shore up his investors to say that are looking at this shit show that's going on right mm -hmm. now and say, you know what? Let me give you four things why this is still smart, right? And so I, agree. Mm -hmm. I think that's the reason why he's doing that because he you knows there's that sentiment out there like, yeah. are you sure yeah. about this? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. look at, look at, you know, Zillow stock is, you want to, you want to get in that game? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so he has I to, agree I mean, he's, he's, he's ha he has to come up with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're Andy, you know, look, you have, you have a lot of credibility with investors. Do you know what I mean? You've had such oh, a yeah. long track record of just success after success after success. Investors were on him when he acquired LoopNet. Investors were on him when he did a bunch of things, but it's all worked out for him, right? So I think in this case, you're exactly right. I think his investors are looking at this going like, you're doing really well. Why, why the fuck are you messing with residential when the housing market's about to collapse and blah, blah, blah. And I think he has to say, here's why. Uh, yeah. right? here, here, we're and, growing. And let's... Let's again, and I'll go back to what I said. What? Why is he like? These are great reasons to be there, but I think one of the key things is he knows the fucking tsunami's coming, man. Yep. Because everything again, we're only two years out of COVID, mm -hmm. but they're not coming back, and they may have to pay their leases up to a certain point. They may try to sublease. It's crazy that I see all these new buildings being built, but um. That is, well, it's a reckoning. Now, uh, let me walk that back a bit. I guess from Andy's standpoint, they're a SaaS-based company, right? Right. Right. They aggregate, of course, but th to build, for, to charge monthly. Um, you know, uh, are the number of commercial agents going to go down? Because I can, I can see there could be some flurry of activity of like, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, business owners saying, help me sublease this place. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that could be. That could be part of the growth. I know, I know for um, a fact on some of the companies that I work with that, yeah, they're actively trying to sublease their property and having no, mm -hmm. no success because there's so much product available out there. There's a rough time, but meanwhile, everybody's still paying, right? So, um, All right, so what let's, other, let's... What, what, hold on, I just want to work this out with you because you mm -hmm. help me with yeah. this a lot. Like, what a, in in a market where there's a lot of products. And people are trying to offload that product with a lot of competition, right? And you have these agents out there that try to do that for people. I mean, you know, that's that that activity, that new activity of kind of trying to find buyers, subletters in a sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, that or or, or purchasers, like I got to get out of this. Um, you got to believe there's actually more of those people going on than a normal market because. But but right. may, they might not be having success, but still that's going to up the subscriptions for for CoStar because so, there's more yeah. activity out there, right? So so a couple of things to think about. That, how, right? how, how, and let me just finish with this: how how closely is this kind of like nobody's coming back to work apocalypse really tied to CoStar's fortunes? Right. I mean, so how, how close is that? Number one, he's actually mentioned this. He said he thinks people are going to come back to work. That's crazy. Again. It, that's just, I'm just telling you, that's what okay. he believes. Because what he's saying is... That's whistling through the graveyard. Maybe. But, you know, there's some value, some some justification for it. In other words, people are simply more productive when they're sitting in the office. Well, that's, uh, you know, I, I I think if you talk to any developer, they'd, they'd disagree with you. Um, Maybe. But, but again, CoStar famously doesn't do work from home, right? 
like his own company. Right. No, you got well, to come. Of course, to yeah. No, if if you're rep, if you're repping this, you got to rep that. Right? You got to I mean, do that. So that's you got to do one it. thing. To me, the bigger deal and why. So there's two other things to think about. One is because you mentioned our commercial agents are just going to leave, right? You know, you know, uh, he's has stats. It's like no, they're retaining like 95 percent of their subscribers are sticking around, and I think there's a reason for it. Commercial agents are not the same as residential agents. But you don't just go take a 20-hour class and then get your license and start singing homes. You it's don't have a commercial agent, right? It's it's a much bigger deal. Like, you know, so once you get to a point where you can make a living as a commercial agent, chances are it's not the kind of thing you just kind of kick off to the side. You know what I mean? Especially if you're one of the big central business strict, like those guys are less like real estate agents and much more like investment bankers, right? So I don't think you're going to see commercial agents leaving the industry because the market's down. They're just going to suck Do, it do up they have suffer. any other right. source of other revenue sources beyond, you know, sales and, and working out, you know, rentals? Who? Uh, commercial? Commercial agents. Probably not the agents, but the brokerages will often do a lot of property management. Right? They'll yeah, do development. Again, that's tied to, like, the property being used, right? I mean. Property management? Sure. But it's, like, yeah. leasing versus sales, right? No, but, I mean. If I'm coming from the standpoint again that this is an apocalypse and nobody's coming back, so yeah, no, so but so that's the third point. The third point is I'm actually a little bit bullish on commercial estate. Okay, in the following sense, I'm not bullish on office because I'm with you. I don't I don't think work from home is like a passing fad, right? I think it's actually a permanent thing. Where I'm a little bit bullish is industrial, right? And that's an area where residential doesn't touch in the least bit. And I, I can't like you and I talked about this. I think you know the whole uh, Congress, you know, passing the Chip Production yeah. Act. Okay, well now that's that's industrial, right? So a lot of these commercial brokers, Amazon all warehouses, sudden, or exactly, know. exactly, right? I think mm -hmm. they're going to be like, hey, we're going to onshore a lot of manufacturing, and it might start with uh, computer chips. It's going to be automotive parts. It's going to be whatever. And then you look at like some of the global situation, like energy. Right. Okay. Say we want to ship uh, natural gas to Europe. We need to build natural gas terminals, and we need to build refineries. Like, there's a lot of industrial. Okay. So that's stuff interesting. That could yeah. So to me, I guess, and this is just my myopic and not really thinking about it. In my world, when I when I think commercial real estate, I really just think office buildings that mm -hmm. people go to. But really, mm -hmm. you're right. There's a lot more than that. There's manufacturing. Yep. Um, there's other types of commercial real estate. That, I mean, malls, not, I guess malls right. is not a good, good example, but, you know, strip well, malls. Warehouses, or, store, yeah, yeah. Warehouses, those kind of things of, yeah. of whatever. I mean, I, you know, I, I told you I've got my own kind of like uh, industrial mixed-use space that I'm running right now for mm -hmm. my yeah. storage. So my I think, I, I think I'm a little bit more bullish on commercial for that reason, right? That the right. world is changing, the economic system is changing. <laughs> it's not so much about office and houses. It's much more about industrial factories, warehouses. Yeah. Having said that, why then is he jumping to residential? <laughs> it's a, maybe it's a hedge, right? It's, it's it, you know, there's. I, I think that he's he's jumping because he knows they're going to take a hit, and at, at least maybe it's a hit where. Maybe what he's trying to have leverage is that, I mean, you know, what do they say? If you're not growing, you're dying, right? So mm -hmm. if he can't show some consistent growth numbers and he's not going to, you're not, he's probably thinking you're not going to see a lot of growth in the, in the commercial space. Where is he gonna, else going to find growth? Mm -hmm. He's found growth at apartments.com. And so this is the next thing. Um, sure. Maybe he's maybe, and again, maybe he is, he, uh, I think this is what's happening. It's like, he knows going on, um, this th there's 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 an end to this whether it's an apocalypse or not but it does it's not going to be as it was it's not going to grow as it was so mm -hmm. we've got to do something here hey everybody i'm so happy to announce our newest sponsor rentspree rentspree is la based and is a provider of award winning rental software that helps real estate agents owners and renters to simplify and automate the entire real estate rental process from listing to lease these guys have got it figured out with nationwide coverage, Rentspree is an all-in-one platform is known for its easy and secure interface and suite of rental tools, including tenant screening, rent payments, marketing, and renter management. To date, Rentspree has partnered with over 250 of the most influential MLSs, associations, and brokerages, and they have over 1 million users throughout the U.S. That's great. In fact, they just announced a deal with the Miami Association of Realtors. This brings their agent count in Florida to over 120,000 agents. 
with over 600,000 total in the U.S. that is able to access Rentspree through their MLS or association. Rentspree is ranked 625th on the latest Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies list in 2022. Also, check out the show notes uh, for Rentspree.com. Thank you, Michael, and the entire Rentspree team for sponsoring industry relations. Rob and I really do appreciate it. So go visit Rentspree.com today. Again, smart, right? Very smart. No, I like I said, to me, uh, unless and, and real estate cyclical. I mean, you could argue this might be the the best time to you know buy assets. I mean, Del Preeti wrote that article about like but prey let, and predators, right? Let, I mean, let me float. Let me float something by you, okay? Because okay. I think you would. I don't know how you're gonna think, so I'll just float it by you. This is sort of the the high level, like speculative bullshit, right? So, right. hey, everybody, warning: speculative bullshit, trigger warning. All right, they should they should have known that by just pressing play here. So Seriously, that is true. Um, but remember how Zillow and CoStar were roughly the same valuation a year, two years ago, around mm-hmm. twenty five, twenty six billion. All right, Zillow today is seven billion. CoStar's thirty two billion. Right, lots of reasons why. But when you take a big step back and go, okay, why, what happened, All right? One of the things I think we can say is the reason why CoStar has maintained so much strength, so much revenue growth is from their subscription business because they don't buy and sell commercial real estate, right? They don't actually charge for leads to, a, you know, they, if you think about it, they really are just a MLS for commercial real estate and commercial agents and brokers have to use it. You have to subscribe. You don't have a choice. So the real opportunity in the residential side, and now he's saying it's homes.com, it's display, it's our business model. That doesn't really like, yeah, I kind of get it. But the real value is going to be when you're the commercial, when you're the MLS for residential as well. And residential real estate is roughly three times the size of commercial real estate. Roughly. Right. So if I'm, so if, again, just spec like if I'm just looking at okay, I'm the commercial MLS and I'm worth thirty billion. If I could somehow become the residential MLS, I'd be worth a hundred billion. Right. Right. I mean, okay. I mean, this is, you're, you're you're positing the the, the the this not the same old, but I mean, what has been posited for a while yeah, is same the old. real same old. It's the same old. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, that co-stars out to be the to replace the to replace all the MLSs. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, again, and again, no. Here's the thing. I mean, let's you be very keep clear. coming up with, with I know let's, valid let's reasons be, why that could be their strategy. Let's be very clear. CoStar is not out to replace them, right? CoStar is out to be in position to pick up the pieces when they get smashed. If they get smashed, right? If they get smashed, and I think if to the, me, the su- hits. Correct. And I think the significance of him mentioning the antitrust lawsuits on this earnings call is he sort of alerting, hey, February, because he said the trial is scheduled for February. We'll revisit this in February. Right. I think he's letting his investors and Wall Street know, hey, there's this asteroid headed this way. It's going to hit and it's going to destroy a lot of shit and we're going to be here. Yeah, I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think he was making a necessarily threat to the MLS there. No, no, not at all. No, no but I mean, again, I think his overall message was like he's getting pressure of like, why the fuck you want to go into real estate, real estate, which is a shit show. Correct. Here's here's some reasons why, that you, and they and gives them some pause to think about. I mean, he definitely that's right. threw them some raw steak to that's right. chew on for a while for sure. That's right. I mean, again, smart guy. I mean, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Now. Let me read one part of this that really blew my mind because this is the piece I thought I would like to kind of get your take on it. So the, during the Q&A, you know, all these earnings calls, they have a Q&A period with the analysts. One of the analysts asks him, and this is what he says, <clears throat> I wanted to, fo- this is the analyst, I wanted to focus on the M&A pipeline, particularly with the $750 million of equity raised, right? So CoStar went out and sold some stock and raised $750 million. I understand it's opportunistic, but also should we assume that was some, that was something is imminent? And then obviously, you've shown intent in the past to do some transformational deal on the residential side. Is that an area you would continue to focus on? Andrew Florence, yes. So we obviously have a great balance sheet now approaching $5 billion in cash on the balance sheet, continue to be strong cash flow positive. Our primary new initiative is residential 
So we are looking at all the opportunities out there in the residential space. So, yeah, what do you I think? Mean, who do you think what? What do you think is the transformational deal that Kosar could do on the residential side? Knowing right. that he said he's focusing on it, he's looking at it. Uh, this is like he was very forthright about it. What do you think that could be? Right. Um, uh, I can be several things. I'll throw you a bone here. If you want to transform some <laughs> deals? He buys NorthwestMLS.com or Northwest Ooh. MLS. Ooh. He buys an MLS, right? Okay. Okay. That's to me crazy transformational. Why? You know, uh, why? I mean, has anybody done that? Has an outside entity bought an MLS uh, organization? Well, before? MLS no. has never sold. So. Yeah. Again, so. That would be, I mean, just, okay, I'm just throwing so, so fucking say, shit on the wall here. That would be a, sure, a big But let's thing. say that happens. I guess I'm curious why you think that would be so transformational. Um, I, I think because now we have this public entity owning an MLS, this this MLS organization. And right. I don't know what the dynamics that would cause. It would just be like, what happens now? I mean, we, we've crossed all these lines with... Vendors becoming participants, participants becoming this and that. I mean, that to me is the, the next line to be kind of um, to be stepped over, right? I, I don't okay. know what would happen there. I'm just saying that seems to be an illogical, <clears throat> not illogical, but another thing I would like. I never saw that would ever happen, right? I never saw like a, a vendor becoming sure, a participant, but, right? Well, I, okay, but that's that's just industry gossip news. Like, oh, my God, Coaster about Northwest. All right. right. I haven't, thought, I haven't thought. I haven't through what what would happen after that. No, I'm just saying. So let's do that now. Is what I'm saying. Okay. Like, how right. does, okay. That then, does that transform? Right. Simply because CoStar now owns a dominant MLS in the Seattle metro area. Right. Okay. So let me. That's let me, it. Yeah. And and you've talked about this before that MLSs should consider right something like this right of 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 doing this right. So let me let me think about this. There's 530 MLSs out there. Right. Uh, 400 of those MLSs have less than 400 members each, right? Right. So that's, let's say, what's uh, 530 minus 400, right? 130. 130, right? So, right. Uh, yeah, 130. So, the, and then the top 50 of those comprise 1 million agents. Okay, so, yep. So, check. Now he has one. You know, he has to make 50 acquisitions. And he owns, you know, the the listings generated from a million agents, right? Can he make the top ten? If right. he buys the top ten MLSs, he will have he will now have like I mean he will have the subscription model you're talking about. Yeah, if we're, but but here, so time out. So I mean I'm just thing. spitballing. I, I'm not saying no, I this get is, you. Okay, I get you. We, this is us brainstorming. Okay, because right. that's what we do on yeah. these relations. Northwest MLS, I think you said that specific because they're broker owned. Right. I did. CRMLS is association owned. So, right. you know, like I, that, that's a different animal. Yeah. Right. But so I'm like, okay, so fine. Coastar comes in, buys Northwest MLS. Fuck it. They buy a bunch of broker. They buy first FMLS down in Atlanta. They buy MLS pen. MLS pen. Right. Yeah. Cool. How does that then transform? Because even if they then say, go to Bright and say, hey, Bright, we'll, we'll acquire you. The associations are probably not going to give that up. Right. Right. So. Okay. I was wrong. No, it's not that I'm you're wrong. Going, yeah. It's not that you're wrong because you had something there. You said Northwest MLS like, like that. So what was the, the, I'm trying to flesh that out. I'm not saying you're wrong. There's something there. Like why well, would that I, be? The reason I picked North MLS is exactly what you said, because I was thinking they're broken around. So that would be an easier target. I didn't think beyond that. I mean, just right. you're thinking like, what would be the way that, at least I interpreted the way you posited it. It was like, okay, what would be a crazy thing to happen that they could do, right? right? Transformational. I mean, right. I'm just thinking crazy first. Transformational to me was the second thing, right? Um, right? So, okay, let's let's go back to that. I guess buying Zillow. Right? Yeah, I think that could be transformational because I think we both see. Well, Homes.com, thanks very much, but uh, mm -hmm. we got something better here, right? Um, what else? Realtor.com. They could buy Realtor.com. Yeah. Right? Um. They've said this before, but they already they have a brokerage with 10x, right? So yep. 10x could buy at the at the deflated stock price. Um, fucking Compass, 
Sure. Largest. I mean, at the share price it is now, that's more of a freaking thing than and it, TEDx now is Compass. They're the largest per, I guess, dollar wise brokerage in the country at a pretty, pretty right. fucking cheap price. Right. Um, you know, as far as the technology, I mean, this is I'm going here somewhere now. Yeah, 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 yeah. This Compass has deflated their I mean, just decimated their technology stack. Right. Yeah. Well, and he's good. At, like he talks about that's what we do here. We We take this data and we. We build technology to help agents, you know, use this. He's obviously working on that so that their their technology problems could kind of go away because they have a whole new department that's doing that, those kind of things and working on those things right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's, again, you know, it would be the first time that uh, a CEO has backtracked on something they said, let's say, like, <laughs> I'm not going to be a broker. We'll never be a broker, right? So that would be transformational. Um and give them a you know a good a, a fair thing there. Um, what else would be transformational? Um, you know, could could they could they go in with some of the plaintiffs? Plaintiffs? <laughs> I doubt it. They're not a party. Yeah, they're, they're not, not a party. Okay, could they could they could they find somebody and and fund another lawsuit that they're more mm-hmm. in control of, right? With their with their attorneys. Um, could they do that? Um, so I had an investor. So I asked an investor banker. Is that enough? I'm sorry. I don't. That's pretty. That's pretty good, man. Okay, and right. uh, and he gave me an answer that kind of go. Oh, really? What? Uh, what? what he said was the Black Knight Ice deal. Okay. That we interviewed Saul Klein on. Yeah. Right? And neither of us could really understand what Saul was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that's not closed. No, they didn't say it was going to close until next year. Right. And apparently it's undergoing a bunch of regulatory reviews and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, so his thing deal, was, right? there's a chance that CoStar comes in and just says, you know what? We'll just take that off your hands. Black Knight? Yeah. And yeah. I says, for enough money, like we're, we're having trouble with this. And when they started that deal, residential real estate was super hot. Now it's not. So maybe. Inflated the impact, price. Right. Maybe. So if CoStar comes in and says, look, we'll give you whatever, right? And we'll do some deal with you. Like it's well, it's you know, for it, that matter. That's a, that's a fucking great. That is right? that is an interesting thing because you think about it. Having been part of like a few acquisitions, when you're uh-huh. in that when you're in that period, no matter what you do, you get distracted, right? right? And if that thing goes away, I don't know if there's a poison pill or some sort of breakup fee or something, but right. You know, the last thing you're thinking of is that you're going to have to do this on your own. So if some other suitor comes in and, and wants to make that thing happen, they've got a pretty good chance of taking right. that asset over. Um, now, what I'm curious about is intercontinental exchange. Because mm-hmm. right? that's ICE. Nice. Continental ice, ice, exchange. Baby. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 what dun, is dun, their dun, market dun. cap? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Well, don't they own oh, the market? They're, they're bigger. <clears throat> Internet. Oh, they're ice. My market cap is fifty-four billion. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely they're huge. <laughs> I thought, what if Costa? I mean, and, and, and this is not ice. so crazy because, as you said, um, they tried to buy Costa uh, Co- CoreLogic, right? So this is yeah. right in their wheelhouse, right? Yeah, and it wouldn't be residential, so I, you know, but I could easily see maybe something like, you know, uh, ice allows Costa to acquire Black Knight. In exchange, ICE takes a twenty percent stake in CoStar. Hmm. 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 That could be transformational, but why would that be transformational? <laughs> because now CoStar would own public MLS. records as well as yeah. an MLS vendor, right? Right. They got yeah. I mean, but public records data is pretty easy to to obtain anyway. Is it? Oh, you could pay Black Knight or CoreLogic, um, you know, a monthly fee, and boom, you got it. I know, but there aren't that many vendors that supply it, right? There aren't that many companies that manage to really aggregate public records because it's such a pain in the ass, you know? All sure. right, so that could be transformational. Uh, it was like just one of those one. things that got me thinking, and I was like, oh, Greg and I, Greg would love, you know, just think of what could be transformational. I like Northwest MLS, so maybe they buy an MLS. Maybe they acquire Black Knight. Are, are there any tech companies that could acquire well, that? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I don't think so. Because I don't think it's a brokerage, right? Right. Because they've been around the commercial real estate for so long, and they could have bought some commercial brokerage. They never did, right? Because they know that it will hurt their uh, SaaS business. 
So I don't think it's a brokerage, but I could see it being like a big major tech company. Like, is there some tech company that would be more important than others, I guess, right? Well, I mean, if like they're going lo- in the, down Wolf? the MLS world, I mean, they could buy FBS. Could they buy Lone Wolf? They could buy, they could buy Lone Wolf. I mean, Stone Point could, I mean, I guess every asset that Stone Point has is up for sale. Could, maybe, maybe Stone Point's fed up with Color Logic and would sell, you know, go back and give it back to them or, you know, sell it to them. Or sell it at a profit, you know, 30% I, premium. I don't, I don't know about that, right? Because, I mean, I think Andy would be looking for some decreased prices from the, 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 the place he was looking from before, right? True. So, so I don't think that would happen. I think, you know, I think Stone Point and others, other PE firms that have bought assets, they're still looking to grow that mm-hmm. and then, you know, go through this cycle and then, you know, and then. What, sell, about, right? what about DocuSign? DocuSign, well, what's the market cap about DocuSign? I mean, let's see. DocuSign market cap, nine point seven billion. Eh, right, I mean, relatively it's small. Right? Is that it's over? Is that over Zillow? What was Zillow? Seven or seven? No, seven. Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus, I know. Damn, how things have changed. Yeah, um, DocuSign could be interesting because it it raised the same side of specter as when Zillow acquired Dot Loop, right? Everybody was freaking out. Yeah, about but whatever the data. happened with that, right? I, mean, I know it was it was a nothing burger. Um, Open Door. Well, they got the partnership with Zillow. They are the the stock price is way hammered. Appreciated. Yeah. Um. I don't know that. that I think that's more. I mean, if he got questions, if he's getting questions now, why are you getting a resident interest real space? That's true. Right? Yeah, yeah. He would go, why are you getting into home flipping? I mean, that would That's just true. be yeah, yeah. That would be too tough step to do. Too far. Yeah. I don't know. But, okay, you're, you're, you know, the, the, the reporter or the analyst, I don't, who said the word transformational? The, the analyst. Yeah. So you're honing in on this word. Andy says yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, what else are you going to say? No, I'm not well, going mean, to. I mean, he could have said, listen, I, mean, I don't know. know he could have easily said, I don't know what you mean by transformational, right? Well, I mean, uh, but, but if I'm asked, you know, would you consider being buying a transformational? Of course I would say yes. I mean, there's no there's no other answer to, to than yes to that. You're, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, I'd say that I just found his answer being I mean, I love this mental like, exercise. Yes. Don't get me wrong, right? Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. it's, you know. Yeah. Um, but what I loved is he wasn't like, uh, most of the time when you, when, uh, like public company CEOs get asked questions, right? I mean, they go, you know, we're always looking for opportunities. We're always open to blah, blah, blah. No, he was like, yes, <laughs> yes. And then yeah. uh, we, our primary new initiative is residential, right? Like that's a clear signal because CoStar has always been like an acquisition powerhouse, right? So when they acquired Homestead, they acquired like a German commercial property exchange. He wasn't like primary residential, right? Um, looking at all the opportunities out there in residential space, very active and looking for M&A opportunities, also monitoring market conditions, right? Blah, blah, blah. And he's, he said, look, we're not, we're not overpaying. You know, we think right. these residential assets He's walked away really from hammered. deals, right? We already yeah. know that, right? So We already know that. So it's super interesting, but it led me to think, like, we always speculate on sort of the, ooh, what if, you know, like what would be the scariest acquisition? Oh, here's a, here's one, here's one. MLS. Okay. There's one. He he buys. Who just bought VHT? Oh my God! Yes. Oh, what about yeah. like he buys Clear Capital, right? Ooh. Right. He Is buys all VHT? the the aggregators of all the 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 photo and video guys, right? Because that's yeah. one thing we've been talking about. Where one of his one of their strategies was to provide those services for free. Well, I mean, Matter if you own them. Matterport. Matterport. Um, Matterport these other high end things. Hmm. Right, that that could be. Now he's got, you know, that's Photos. his. Yeah, right? and he, you know, he he might not want to use those. I mean, he's already been famous for like. I mean, think about what he did with the uh, home snap. No, we don't want mm-hmm. the dollar anymore. Yeah, every else in the country, take it. We got another yeah. strategy. I mean, it's free. It's yeah. free. He could do the same goddamn thing with photos and video by just buying. I think Clear Capital bought them, right? No, it's Matterport. Now Matterport. Matterport. I don't that's know. right. Matt, so he buys Matterport. Mm-hmm. Shit, dude, that's got to be a, the, the, the footprint they have. Um, yeah, and then that's an advanced technology that fits mm-hmm. into whatever. Oh, no, we'll do a scan of your house, every, every mm-hmm. everything, and he owns all that shit. Yeah. 
The metaverse, dude. Ooh, I like it. I like it. All right. Okay, so look, trans- we're good. We're good like here, bro. It. The transformational acquisition is CoStar acquires Matterport. What's Matterport. Yeah. What's Matterport selling? What's Matterport's market? It's got to be like that. But uh, let's see. Less than less than two billion. I mean, it's got to be less than a billion. One billion. One billion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One billion. And, dude, uh, that's Coast- easy. I, that's I like easy. It. I like it. We're calling it. We're calling, We're calling it right it. now. We're calling it right now. Transformational yeah. deal in residential. CoStar oh, yeah. acquires Matterport. <laughs> love it. All right. Cool. Uh, listen, I mean, f- for listeners, if you have your own thoughts, uh, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think would be transformational uh, if Andy, Florence, and CoStar were to do this acquisition? All right. And the the uh, the specs are CoStar is worth $32 billion. That's our market cap. Right, they have five billion in cash, and we know they raised seven hundred fifty million to do acquisitions. So <laughs> that's the rough parameters, right? So I mean, let's, be... I mean, I'm just looking at this like at a a five year. I mean, in this is Matterport I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So one year ago, November nineteenth, they're at twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven. You know, about a share, about twenty eight dollars. Yeah, and they're. They're fucking three forty four right now, dude. Three dollars yeah. and forty four cents. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I, I bet if you went and offered four dollars a share, every shareholder in Matterport oh, would sell. Absolutely. Especially with the conditions now. Yeah. Every single you're, one. Uh, did you think of this or was it me? What, what, it was you. Smart. It was totally oh, okay. you. I'm smart then. Yeah. You it was totally you. So, <laughs> thanks, Greg. Congratulations. That was awesome. Uh, I don't know when I see you next. You know, so hopefully I'll get to see you when I'm in. Um, yeah, so you'll be down in, in San Juan, right? I don't. I don't even remember where. Like somewhere in Southern yeah. California, somewhere in. Right. Orange when County. do you get here? So Thursday. Thursday. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah I'll, so I'll, I'll send you a text. You know. Yeah. See how we can hang out. I will. Sorry, I will be missing the actual event itself. You know, yeah. I think it's Monday through Wednesday. So. Yeah. But you'll you'll tell me all about it. Maybe on our next. Well, I'm looking at the experience about. rooms. I'm I'm excited. Yeah. 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 Oh. And then uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about things like realestatenews.com, which certainly we should chat about at some point. Yeah, I I, I want to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, thank you, Greg, for yet another wonderful conversation, and uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Ciao, y'all. <laughs>